I remember three years ago when I was trying on my wedding dress. Um, it was before I got married, but it was when I was wedding planning. Um, and I was trying on my wedding dress, and I was in the bridal shop, standing up on one of those pedestals um, in front of full-length mirrors. I think there were three or four of them that sort of went around me to show every angle of my body. And I was standing there with the seamstress, my mother, and my mother's best friend. And I was in my underwear and a bra, basically, before they were putting the slip on me and then the, the wedding dress. But I was standing there in my underwear, and I was thinking to myself, this is such a profound moment because if this was happening three years earlier, I would be a mess right now. I could never, ever stand on a step in my underwear in front of three w women, one of them my mother, one of them my mother's best friend, and one who I've never even met before, and not hate myself and my body and not feel uncomfortable. But it was completely the opposite. I felt so happy to be getting married and so happy to be standing there, even in my underwear. And I looked at myself in the mirror and I didn't mind what I saw at all. In fact, what shot through my mind in that moment, and I remember it so clearly as if it was yesterday, what shot through my mind in that moment was that I was so, so grateful that I would get to walk down the aisle looking the way I did in that mirror than looking the way I had a few years before. So um, today, I'm 25, I'll be 26 in October of 2010. I've been married for two years um, and I am very happy, I'm very healthy, um, I'm at least 25 pounds heavier than my lowest weight. I don't like to talk numbers at all. Um, and I really love life and I consider myself recovered. And what that means to me is that I am mentally well and physically well because I don't think being recovered just means being physically well because for a while there, my weight was fine, but I was still struggling and I still had an eating disordered mind and it was still plaguing my every thought and being part of my every day. But for the last definitely probably four years, um, the eating disorder hasn't been in the forefront of my mind. It's not a part of my day at all. I live a completely normal life. I lead the support group. Um, I'm going back to school for my MSW and I'm happy. It doesn't trouble me. It's Anything that I do with eating disorders now is for other people. It's to help other people. It has nothing to do with me. When I think of my eating disorder, it's a part of my past. It's a piece of my past um, that I'm never going to visit again. And I have met a wonderful, wonderful friend who is my soul sister, um, and her name is Alicia. And we met because of recovery from our eating disorders and we have become the best of friends. And what brought us together was this horrible, horrible illness. And after it brought us together, we pretty much bonded over everything but that. And we've just become so close. And it's one of the friendships that I will treasure most in my life. And sometimes I forget that we met because we were recovering people. And it's just amazing to me. It's really amazing to me that we've come so far and we are healthy and well and happy and living our lives and, you know, are still so close. And it's great to be able to share that and go through a journey like that with someone and know that we've both been in hell and have come out. And, I mean, she came to visit me a year ago and we went out to eat every meal, basically, except for breakfast. You know, we went out to lunch, we went out to dinner, and she was here for three days. So that's a lot of meals out. And to people with an eating disorder, that is just so unfathomable and scary. And, you know, when I told the women in my group that they were just like wide eyed and couldn't believe that someone could do that after recovering from an eating disorder. 
And it's just a testament to how far we've come and that we really have recovered and that we can be normal women and hang out and have a great time. One of the things that always um, fascinates, <laughs> for lack of a better word, the women in my group or people that I talk to on a regular basis that struggle with an eating disorder is that I drink real Coke and not Diet Coke and I, you know, will eat a donut or a piece of cake or a candy bar. I mean, I just remember, I don't even remember who I was talking to, but someone who struggled with an eating disorder. And I told this person that that day I had gotten a Coke and a Snickers bar from the vending machine at work. And she just looked at me like I had three heads. And it, it made me smile and laugh because... In just that simple statement, I was proving to her that you can get past what is attacking you, what's attacking your soul and your mind, and you can get back to living. I think my life could have played out very differently, um, you know, if certain things had happened differently, but anyone can play that game, the what-if game, and I have made many, many good friendships and I have lived a very good life and I have a lot, a lot of life left to live. And I'm really happy with the way things went because I was able to recover before I had wasted too much of my life. And I feel like even though I don't quite have the qualifications that I'm working towards yet, I am in a position to help other people and have them take what I say to heart, which just means the world to me. And it's strange because I consider myself to have been in recovery for several years, but I only consider myself as being fully recovered for approximately four. Um, and... I, I consider myself fully recovered now, and I've been the way that I am right now since I graduated, uh, since shortly after I graduated from college in 2006. So um, I could really go on and on forever just talking about my life and my experiences, but that's not really what this blog is all about, but I, I did want to touch on that because I do get asked a lot, you know, where I stand in, in anorexia and what my story is and what my past is and how I dealt with things and what happened to me. So that's me. And I went through, you know, I guess eight, I, I went through many, many years um, in a very brief amount of time, but hopefully you enjoyed listening to it.